Hello and welcome to the First Man's Show, episode 6. It's been a fantastic journey so far and it continues today. We've decided to kick out Justin from the studio because we don't want him involved and creating a mess. Last week we had lots of complaints with regards to Justin and him knowing nothing about sport. So today we decided to honor you guys, all the listeners that have sent in those complaints about him. He's being booted out. I'm joking, he's actually smiling and looking like an ass, but uh, it's okay. We still love him anyway. Uh, Justin Peterman. Peterman, I said it right today, so I'm gonna. Yeah, I think I need a clap. Come on, give me a clap, give me a clap. <laughs> come on now, come on now. Huh? You know what? We were even on the chance for comedy, so I found, I found, I found myself quite funny. I'm backing myself. Huh? But uh, we, as always, uh, we're going to be starting um, with the roundup. Um, plenty has been happening in the in the world of sports. I've got a. I don't know if I can call him a legend or. He's no. shaking his head, so already he's saying no. But uh, I know he's going to want to touch on some, some of the subjects that we're going to start with. I know. But just a quick reminder before we do get going. Um, just a quick reminder with regards to you guys uh, following us on our different social media platforms at Podzilla Media. Make sure that you keep following us on that specific platform across the different um, uh, platforms. And make sure that uh, you are subscribing to the show at Feastmas Show on Instagram as well. So uh, yeah, we're everywhere. We are lurking. We are... Well, I can't say we're pouncing, it's going to sound a bit weird. But uh, yeah, we're there. We're there, we're in the mix. And uh, a special guest for today, he played for Kaiser Chiefs. He played for Orlando Pirates. He played for Bitvis Vits. And even, let's throw it way back, he played for Vits University. Mm. You know, before they even came out to Bitvis Vits and becoming sponsored and having a bit of money, they were still struggling then and they decided to rope him in because, you know, you have to just find something, uh, something you know, to give him a kick. But he also played for Grasshoppers um, as well as FC Moscow. His name is Stanton Fredericks. Can we give him a round of applause? Come on. Woo! Let's... Woo! <laughs> he's, he's a brother with the, the, the best hair in the game. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, he thanks. promised today he's not going to be doing a signature hand pose that he does whenever he's on, on Super Sport. So <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Stanton Fredericks, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're starting on the roundup. I'm going to rope you in here. Yeah. I know you, you do watch sports. Um, obviously, the Springboks, they've done quite nicely. They won the rugby championship. Are you are you a big uh, big rugby man or a big so, part here and there? So there goes your assumption. You see, what's, you know what's what's about assumptions? Because uh, I never went to a private school. Oh. I always so, knew you were filthy. <laughs> <laughs> no, like really, I went to uh, Nuclear Primary in Johannesburg. Yeah. I then went to um, Coronationville High. And in those schools, we had football, football, and more football. So unfortunately, I was not exposed to rugby. Unfortunately, I was not exposed to cricket. Um, to my dismay, you know, I'm not happy about that. Uh, I do watch the sports. I do follow. Not intensely, not very au fait with the rules and stuff. But um, uh, when my cousin pl- started to play for the Blue Bulls, I then obviously got interested. His name is Keegan Fredericks, won okay. the Curry Cup with the Blue Bulls. I uh, started to watch a bit, and ever since then, I follow. Okay. So, um, yeah, um, not in depth. Um, if I were to play rugby, I'd possibly pass the ball forward. So <laughs> that's, that's a summary of my knowledge of rugby. Yeah? I reckon you'd make it good center, eh? You know, with, so. the, with the, that side step, maybe you know. No, I always tell Brayton he, he doesn't drop his shoulder prop like that. He played those boys, yeah. No, fascinating. But I mean, yeah. the Springboks. I mean, going to the World Cup to win the rugby championship. I mean, that was a massive achievement for them. And I mean, like football, like any other sport, you know, that confidence going into a major event uh, sure, it will no doubt be a massive asset for the team. Yeah, certainly. I think we're on the up and up. If you look at um, sport in South Africa, yes, sir. Uh, the cricket results was dismayed. Um, I think Bafana certainly gave us a bit of hope. Banyana doing exceptionally well in the World Cup. And it's actually springing up uh, women's football around the country, which is exciting times. And then looking forward to the rugby, you know. You know, I always say, when the cricket and the rugby do bad, mm. we're fifth or sixth in the world. Yeah. They, they, then it's disastrous. Uh, bringing it back to Bafana, you know. So that, that difference is, even when our rugby team is not doing well, it's not the end of the world, you mm. know what I'm saying? I think uh, the rugby nation has high expectations, which is um, oh, obviously they, understood. They, they, they come understood. high. They come no, no, high. it's they understood. The people saw dance that. Hey, my bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's understood, yeah. So, yeah, looking forward to that, and hopefully we, we win it, yeah? yeah. 
No, 100%. I mean, you touched on Banyana Banyana. And I mean, shout out to all the, the ladies out there. It is Women's Month. So I think we need to give a special shout out to them and Banyana Banyana who have been doing, as you said, an amazing job. I mean, a lot of people came hard um, with, the result, with the results not quite going our way out at the World Cup. But I mean, we, we put in some really good performances out there. You know, and the performance that stood out for me was um, against Spain. Yes, we lost 3-1, but we managed is, is to that, go. Is that the one where you were the only man, man on, on no. the all-female <laughs> panel? St- St- Stanton, Stanton made history because yeah. it was an all-female panel for the World Cup. Uh, and there's yeah. my man with the slick hair, yeah, looking right. fresh. It goes down with in the, the hands in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have pink tie. That's okay. Just, just to you know, bring yeah, one hundred percent. But I mean, you speak about that yeah. performance against Spain. I mean, that start. I mean, that Timbi Khatlana goal. I mean, everything about that was was it was just mind blowing. Yeah. So just, just to give uh, the listeners a bit of insight is that we do not have a professional league in South Africa. Mm. You go to the World Cup and you and you punching with the best in the world. The Spanish league is up there. Spain themselves mm. um, has started with this very team at the under twenty national level. Um, they play Champions League regularly. They in all the big teams. And uh, for us to go there, not only against Spain, the entire uh, group stage. Yes, we might not have made it out of the group stages, but I think just holding your own and playing some attractive football. What will happen if we do mm. start to get a professional league? Yeah? So just uh, like I said. Uh, real exciting times for, for women's football. Uh, one of the great things, I mean, you touched on a professional league. I know that is in the pipeline and that's going to be coming around soon. I don't know the exact date, but I mean, that's something that's going to be massive for women's sports and uh, especially about Banyana Banyana to be able to, to help them to get to that next level. No, 100%. And I think it's an outlet because my daughter's eight years old. Um, she sees her dad in the football world and now she also to play football and she's a lefty so uh, you, never know. Are dangerous, uh, eh? you never know eh? what you never know what you know about lefty shoulder what you know about <laughs> lefty boy <laughs> Yeah, no, it's fascinating. Yeah. And I mean, look, you look at the Kasafa Women's um, Championship that's just been finished. Who are the champions? We're the champions again, man! Yeah, on the continent, we certainly hold our own. But um, at the end of the day, it's at the world stage. So, yeah, slowly taking strides. And yeah, let's stay confident and support the ladies. Oh, 100%. I mean, those have been some of the, the big news that have been happening, especially in South African sports. Um, obviously, with the Banyana Banyana winning the Kosafa Women's Championship and uh, uh, the Springboks winning the Rugby Championship for the first time. The last time they won it, it was still the Tri-Nations. So plenty of things to smile about in South African sports. And uh, also the Hockey Africa Cup is underway. So looking forward to see how the ladies perform there. Um, they're going to be the favourites to win it again. And of course, the men, they probably have to contend with the likes of Ghana as well as Egypt out there. So uh, yeah, some truly fascinating sport um, uh, around the country with regards to our national team. So that's the roundup. We're now going to focus on this man right here. I, I, I keep having to cue these guys for this, these, these, this round of applause. I mean, come on now, show, show, show the man some love. Come on now, come on now. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to get a button or something. Yeah, just like, yeah I think so. Yeah, <laughs> or just have a clap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Stanton Fredericks, uh, a football legend in his own right. Um, our special guest for today. Man, I mean, I grew up watching you as much as you played for You played for that, yeah, the that, team. That, okay, can we just take okay. two steps back? Okay. All right. I was There's talking not... about Vits University. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take it right back to the beginning, man. I mean, obviously, yeah, we had Stanton Lewis here. I know you guys come from a similar part of the world. Yeah. Um, talk me about your. Talk me through your upbringing, and then obviously working your way to eventually getting to to Vits University. Yes, um, I grew up in uh, the western side of Johannesburg, nuclear. I think people are more familiar with Wesby, so Nuclear is right next to Wesby. Yeah, loved the game, played in the streets, um, hence um, me being a skillful player and uh, a crowd favourite. Uh, but um, for me, football was, was more than just a sport, mm. you know. I never foreseen myself play professional. I always knew I had the ability, but it was never my dream to say... I want to become a professional footballer because, you know, what you're exposed to is what you know and what you see. So we never had football on on television. Um, I grew up with a single mom, a single parent. So there wasn't a dad to take me to the stadiums or anything like that. So, yes, I love this game called football. And uh, uh, that that was it. That was my my outlet. That Mm. was my fun. Holidays, school, just mm. playing football. Um, my mum was obviously strict at schoolwork, so only after I finished school did I then get an opportunity 
to possibly try this thing called football. But it happened by chance. Played in the local leagues. There was a, a league called Barcelona Football Association. Mm. Um, played since since I can remember. Played there, and then there was trials for a district team. Played the trials, and whilst that was happening, I went to Liberty Life's clerical college. Mm. I was at the college for six months. Then I got posted working for Liberty Life. Six months down the line, uh, played trials. I get selected for under twenty national team. So yeah, I I didn't even take leave. I just went. I knew I needed to go. <laughs> I didn't go back. Oh, All over this guy. I just didn't go to work. I was like, now nah, I'm going. I'm gonna play football. Yeah. Went to Lesotho, played the tournament. We lost in the final. Came back. We we got some uh, some money for that. I'll never forget. I got six thousand rand for that. Yeah, you're you were balling, eh? I was balling, baby, <laughs> balling. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I come back to work and I'm like. Ha, so you went back. Hey, you got yes. balls, eh? No, I got a written warning. <laughs> I got a written warning. Check, I'm just taking the pictures all day. <laughs> and that was like November, and I was just like, no, you know what? I I think I think I want to try this thing called football, you know? And uh, so I went to my mom. I said, Ma, I want to leave work. I don't enjoy it. I want to give football a try, and hopefully I can study. Mm. So I said, you know, boy, whatever you want to do, I back you. So now I was used to getting an income. Mm from Liberty Life. So now I'm going to go back to not getting an income. Hey, it's tough, eh? But the moral of the story is it's never about the money. Ah, you say that now. It's but never about the ish, money. Now you're going to take the lady to the movies. Nah, you, you got to value it. Don't respect Okay. You okay. know what I'm saying? Ish, now you're preaching the... You're preaching... Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. Huh? Bantu education. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I mean, you've touched on a, on, on a key period in your life and... Um, I mean, I was lucky enough to be with you the other day when uh, we were at the German ambassador's house and there was a certain man that was there, yeah. uh, an iconic figure at Orlando Pirates in South African football. Yeah. He's not from here, but he's played a massive role in a lot of people's lives and that's Augusto Palacios. Yes. And uh, talk me through his influence on you at a young age and I mean, you said he kind of discovered you. Yeah. So I made the under-20 national team. We used to play small tournaments here and there and uh, this is now when I decided I'm going to try and become a professional. Mm. So Palacios, so they choose, every year there's a new under 20 national team being chosen. Mm. So you go through the same process, again the districts, you might have a bit of a, a swag because you know you were in the previous one, but you still need to attend <laughs> the trials and make the team. And the second year, this is where Palacios uh, uh, seem to say, okay, this boy's got potential, I want to send him overseas. Yeah. I'm supposed to go to Boca Juniors, I was meant to go to Turkey, um, I think there was another opportunity and uh, this is when he was trying to get me directly overseas. Yes. Then after that, that fell through. I don't know what happened. Then he tried to get me to Kaiser Chiefs. Mm. But all the while, I was playing for Vitz Colts. And uh, I think the end of that year, I decided, I said, look, Augusto, thanks for trying what you want to, but I'm going to go with Vitz. So mm. I signed like a, a, a first team contract, still playing juniors, um, never lasted long. And then... Before long, October that year, I made my professional debut. Ah, this was what, 1981? I win. <laughs> <laughs> 96, baby, yeah. 96, yeah. 96, yeah, 1996. Yeah, no, I mean, a fantastic, fantastic journey for you, no doubt. Um, and then from Vitz, I mean, you, you essentially then get the opportunity to go and play overseas as a result. Yep. Yes, um, my agent at the time was uh, the agent for all the big boys. It was uh, Lucas Radebe's agent, Mark Fish agent. Uh, his name is Glenn Binken. Uh, he spotted me, I think, in my first five, six games, and then he represented me. Um, I think Grasshopper seen me somewhere playing for the national junior national teams, and then invited me over for a trial. Grasshopper is in Switzerland. Grasshopper Zurich. It's in Switzerland. Okay. Yes, uh, they were. Um, a team with rich history. It's the Kaiser Chiefs or the Orlando Pirates of Switzerland. So did not didn't Benjani so. also play for them? Yeah, Benjani played for them. Um, at the time, the coach there was Ray Archkin. And he had, if any, Coco, of uh, another African player, mm. but English. Ray Hodgson, the, the current Crystal Palace. That's okay. correct. Okay. Yes, so he's seen me. He so you were coached by Roy? Yeah. yeah. You know Roy? Yeah. He's no. stunting. You don't want me to start swearing now. <laughs> Every second word is you. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah so that was nice. And then, um, yeah, then I went, I went on loan for six months, tried to do a deal. After the six months, I played nine out of 11 games. And uh, Witz and, and, and Grasshoppers Ulrich never came to an agreement. That really, really hit me for a six because um, I started enjoying football. You know, when you exposed to that level of football, we, I played Europa, Europa League. Back then it was the, the UEFA um, Cup. Yes, UEFA Cup in Europa League against, can you believe it, Galatasaray? Yeah. And, 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 they, and they were a really good side. The likes of Hakan Shukur in there. Uh, oh, yeah. Some massive, yeah. massive so, names. The, the Brazilian striker mm. Jardel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a quality um, experience and uh, I just I just wanted to sign. I was, I was calling my manager, did you sign? Did you yeah. did you organize? He's like, listen, um, but uh, asking for too much and Grasshopper's deciding not to go with it. So Man, that was me back to South Africa. That's a, hard, that's a, that's a big day, guy. It's a life, life changer, you know. And you carry that weight around and... and you're always looking back, looking back, and it was a, a difficult six months for me coming back to to Wits University. Yeah. Not but Wits, Wits, Wits University with a, a shoestring budget. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why they wanted a big fee. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then from there, I mean, yeah. Did you go to the Olympics before or after you went to Chiefs? Um, before. Let's talk about that because I mean, yeah. that's one of the most. I mean, yeah. When you talk about with guys who have come from that team, yeah. Benny McCarthy, Quentin Fortune, um, you know, Samuel Bonvete, Bonvete, yeah. David Kanamea, uh, Brian Malloy, I mean, Barkley. Must, I, I, do I even need to carry Endless. on? I mean, Chavo Pule, Chab, the, 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 trouble, the troublemaker Steve himself, Lecolea. Steve Lecolea. I mean, wow. I mean, yeah. just rattling off those names, yeah. I mean, you're just thinking, what a group of players. Yeah, and you know what? It, it goes back to under 20 World Cup. Because we, we qualified with under-20 World Cup with Sheikh Mashaba. And um, under-20 World Cup, we come up against Brazil. And we come up against France. And in the French team, under-20, uh, your left wing is Nicolas Anelka. Your right wing is uh, Thierry Henry. Your striker is David Trezeguet. So now you move on to the Olympics and you come up against the same boys. Yeah. You know? And we know what happened at the Olympics. Um, I think it's still one of the highlights of my career. Um, being part of the bigger sporting world. It's, uh, it's something I can't explain in words. You have to be there to understand and experience the moment of being an Olympian. Yeah. And living in the athlete's village. Do you, you, know? do you have an Olympic tattoo like everyone? No, I don't. Come on, man. No. Come on, man. No. I'm disappointed in you. No, I ain't like that. Huh? I, ain't like, I ain't like that. I'm undercover. I stay in my lane. <laughs> I stay in my lane. Yeah, yeah, so then, yeah, that experience is priceless. We came up against uh, Brazil, as you mentioned, uh, against Ronaldinho when he was taunted to be the next Pele. Mm. At his best. Yeah. At his very best. Yeah, we overcame that team. We beat them, I think it was 3 1. And uh, that's after the Olympics, I went to Grasshopper Zurich. Yes. That never happened. Back to Wits. So, so that high, yeah, and yeah. then to come down again, it's, it's very difficult. Mm. But I managed to, to pick myself up. The last game of the season, upon returning from Switzerland, Wits plays Kaiser Chiefs. Mm. Two months before that, the Bosman ruling comes in, where if your contract is up, you're allowed to go for free. Yes. Couldn't that rule have come six months earlier? So I could have been in Switzerland. <laughs> But anyway, that being that, um, so now uh, we play against Chiefs and so mesmerize them. We, we drew 1-1, I, I scored the goal. And so so my, my agent, Glenn, says, listen, Chiefs wants to buy you, Chiefs wants this. And then I had the opportunity to decide, you can go for free and earn maybe 10 times more than you're earning now at Wits. Mm. Or they can buy you from Wits and you'll earn half of that. Mm. And I think this is where I, I say this again. It's never about the money. You know, Wits gave me an opportunity. Mm. And uh, so Kazichis ended up buying me. That's when I went to Chiefs. My coach was Mushi Netigra. And he, he helped me forget about Grasshopper mm. Zuri. He says, you want to go to Europe? You can go to Europe. But listen to me. It wasn't easy though, because I tell you that coach is a <laughs> menace. But anyway, so that was my route to Kazichis. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> you touch on Coach Rashid. <laughs> I mean, I just picked her yes. on the side of the field, losing right. his mind. <laughs> no, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. So now you go to Chiefs, you do well. All these opportunities come, and in the, so kickoff had this thing called soccer babes. Yeah. So you must go model. Yeah. With them model, you know. So we go to Zanzibar. So I'm like, Coach, is it okay? The team says it's okay. I'm gonna miss one session. Yeah. We're going to do a photo shoot on an island. He says, no, no, cool. No, no problem. Go do it. Yeah, yeah. So I go there, have fun, come back. Uh, they're training the Wednesday. Now I can see this guy's not happy with me. everything. Stay on. Yes, that's man. Yes, that's man. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I made one mistake. He says, yes, that's boy. You must go and model. I tell you, go and model. <laughs> Don't forget this football. This football game is not for you. <laughs> Yeah, that coach was crazy, man. Yeah, I know, but, but I mean, you had great success there. I mean, there was Operation Fat Alice, uh, yeah, that yeah. guys, the Chiefs fans will know very well. I mean, you, didn't, you guys didn't do particularly well in the league, but the Cups was like, that was your thing. Yeah, so three years at Kaiser the Chiefs, um, 13 Cups. And I think That's... only three years for, at Kaiser the Chiefs. I think today, having been retired for five, going on six years, I think um, when I walk in the street, people, Kaiser Chiefs fans, till today. They don't forget the, that era. They, they will never forget that era. Yeah. Because there was also another guy on the opposite wing that you played with. Caused a lot of havoc. I know, I'd swear. He had the polka dots on his head. I, I was the You I was had the, the blonde on the other side. <laughs> Talk me through that. Talk me through Yo. that combination because that combination really yeah. excited the nation. No, you know, um, moving to a big team, is it, it, it's glamorous when you're doing well. But... To, to, to establish yourself is the difficult part because you come into a team like Kaiser Chiefs and I was blessed to be amongst quality of the highest order. Tabo Moki, Prime Baloy, Dr. Komalo was still playing, Saral Zama, the name's endless. So when you come in there, you kind of get distracted because it's from Wits University it's a different to animal, Kaiser Chiefs, a different world. You, you can't go anywhere. Everybody knows you. Um, you start being judged. Uh, Stigar dribbles too much. You've never been um, frowned upon. You've mm. never had negative articles. Your adverts, good or bad, they see you once every five games. The pressure is different. Yeah. Than the and sometimes you can fold. But fortunately for me, I played with Ace Mbutu, Patrick Mbutu, in the national team. Brian Baloy was in the national team. Chavo Pule, I met him at the under-23 national team. So when you have a group of friends that's assisting you, yes. When you come into a big team, it makes your life easier, you know. And uh, you talk about Jabu. He was a friend before he was a teammate, you know. Jabu Pule went to Coronationville High, same school that I attended. Mm. So there was a relationship there and he was respected. He made his mark. So I had a few influential, in inverted commas, friends <laughs> in that big team that helped me settle very quickly. And uh, yeah, playing with... with, with uh, and. Later on, John Chus Mishwaya joined us. So playing with that quality, mm. um, there's no surprise that three years, 13 trophies. I want to speak about that friendship a little bit more because a lot of people, obviously today they know him as Jabu Matlangu, mm. um, but the, the people that watch football during those times, man, they love Jabu Pule and what he did on the field. But off the field, he was... a. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, tell me some of the stories that, that oh. I mean, just pick one of your that yeah. the viewers would really, I mean, the, the listeners would love to hear. Yeah. Hey, Shuffle, hey, I can't throw him <laughs> under the bus here. <laughs> but we I all love Shuffle. Yeah, man. no, we love him. No, but yeah. So, so the the beauty about Shuffle is that um, Jabu was so good that when I went to Chiefs, because we would touch the ball and the fans would go wild and he do magic. So now he's a winger. I'm a winger. And then I started to try to do that. But that wasn't my game. Mm. Yes, I could dribble, but I wasn't Jabu. So it took me a few a few months to understand this. Mm. You know, don't compete with Jabu. Let Jabu do Jabu and Stiga will do Stiga, you know. So that was the first difficulty. But the one thing that we had um, an understanding on the field is that without Mushin, giving this instruction. We decided it on our own because sometimes you'll be marked tight, man for man, or I'll be marked tight. And you come up against a different type of defender. Mm. So his way of skinning uh, a defender and mine is two different ways. So sometimes he won't be having joy first 5, 10, 15 minutes, or I won't, and then we'll swap flanks. Mm. And then 
we'll swap flanks again you know so until you're comfortable or what are you getting a better so that's that's what we had we had that relationship on the field when he's had a proper 20 minutes and i've been quiet he'll decide no go, go try the other side similarly when he's been marked yeah. and i'm finding joy we would swap and that transcended to off the field and off the field yes he's my friend but i was also like the father figure because he got into so much <laughs> I mean, so tell us, tell us a bit about that. So, under twenty threes, before we we would go to a big tournament, shake we would camp for three weeks. Yeah. So the coach would say, "Listen, guys, I'm giving you the night off, but everybody has to go out, or nobody goes out." Yeah. So the responsible people was Matthew Booth and myself. We would we would have uh, combis. So I'll be the one driver, Matthew would be the other driver. And he, the camp would be in Johannesburg. Yeah. So we have uh, players from Polokwane, Cape Town, Durban, in Joburg. So back when Hilbra and town was still town, so we'd go to these spots, I'm not going to elaborate, and have fun. And now it's home time. <laughs> we want to go back. Four or five o'clock is home time. So everybody's like, okay, guys, uh, 20 minutes, we're meeting at the door. We yeah. need to go now. Cool. Hey, where's Shuffle? Ah, there's shuffle okay somebody go fed shuffle we're waiting here. so we go and fed shuffle so shuffle's like guys not now we're having fun he's like no fun is over it's five o'clock yeah. we have training now it's breakfast at eight o'clock we must go home now so shuffle's like okay yeah so somebody must go drag him take him by the neck pull him out that has to be me because i have to know he yeah. listens to me so i'm like take him out as we walk out uh, the door he runs away <laughs> No, we can't go. What do you mean? He's like, he runs away. I'm like, this nigga right here. <laughs> so he runs away because he doesn't want to go home. He doesn't want it to end. <laughs> ah, they are chasing him. Patrick and Buddha is chasing him. So I can just imagine a guy who's a bit intoxicated running yeah. away. <laughs> Fuck well, in the morning. Eh, eh. And now, half an hour later, we get him and we throw him. Literally, we have to hit him <laughs> to get in there. Then we go <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yeah that's one of the stories and then yeah eventually we get home at training it's like he slept for eight hours and he's been skinning people like he's been doing it all yeah. day every day that's job for you I mean, it's crazy because I mean there's quite a lot of players that or sportsmen that have been like that yeah. uh, the Mavericks I guess yeah they just do things and then when they're on the field they just yeah, make things happen tick. you know even though they've had one hour sleep you, you know what you can get away with it and this is now being a bit serious you get away with it for five six years mm. it, it catches, catches up. up it catches up with catches you and, up, and, and, and Jabba will be the first to tell you um, he, he wasn't a 24 hour professional but at least South Africa had the opportunity to witness the magics the magical displays that he, he gave out there yeah 100% and a truly memorable time at Kaiser Chiefs and in the absolute premiership I remember that Coca-Cola Cup final against against Jomo Cosmos mm. yeah Yo. Jabu put on a, one hell of a display there yeah and uh, I mean is it true that sometimes they have to go fetch him in the in the in the taverns <laughs> so so we, the interview's about me and I <laughs> <laughs> alright so that, that's the key to move on <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. Round two. And you were saying? Yeah. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, yeah? Yeah. The 50 cent, man. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's very true. So let's just, uh, let's just keep it moving. Um, obviously, then from Chiefs, um, you move on. Was it difficult to leave the club? Yes. Yes, it was. Um, my second year at Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, I won player of the year, player's player of the year. Um, I was a regular in the national team with Bafana Bafana. Played against England, um, had a man of a match performance. And West Ham United was in for me. And I think this is where the relationship with Kaiser Chiefs kind of took a bit of a dent. Mm. Because um, in one's career, you get one opportunity yeah. to go to a league. Of and a that, top side, yeah. Of the, and a top side. And at the time, West Ham had the likes of Joe Cole, um, Frank Lampard, Rio Ferdinand, uh, Paolo De Canio. You can just imagine, you know. So opportunity like that knocks on the door. And Kaiser Chiefs, <coughs> very difficult. Didn't want to accept um, me going over to, to have a trial. 
and the coach called me. So I, I told him, I said, Glenn Roder was a coach. I said, coach, yeah. they want me to, he wants me to come and have a kick about. Mm. So the team is under the impression that it's a trial. And these words were, if, if you buy a new Merc tomorrow, don't you want to choose the color? Don't you want to sit in it? Mm. says, come and have a kick about with the boys. We do a medical and we'll make a decision. So Chiefs was like, no, you're going to make a offer. Mm. You've been watching the boy for two months. Um, he plays for us. He plays for the national team. Work permit, I qualified because you have to be playing 70% of your games for two years for your national mm. team. So all the boxes were ticked. They had to just make an offer. Now, because Cyril and Zama uh, went to West Ham the year before that, yeah. never signed him, uh, he lost a bit of confidence. So Kaiser Chiefs were like, listen, guys, you're not going to do this for our players. Make an offer, go. Yeah. On my side, that, that's what I understand now that I'm older in hindsight. Yeah. But when I was there, all I knew was West Ham wants to sign me. What's the problem? Yeah. He's like, going to make money, give me an opportunity. I need to go. Yeah. Needless to say, that fell through. And um, other teams came in for me. Nothing happened. That was in my second year. I signed for three years. So my third year, obviously a bit lackluster, a bit dejected. Um, still doing the job for Kaiser Chiefs. Got injured, out for three, four months. Came back, went to the uh, Nations Cup 2014. And that's when I decided I want to play in Europe. Mm. I don't want to... It's not about not playing for Kaiser Chiefs. It was about fulfilling a boyhood dream. Mm that you want to play abroad, love abroad, learn a new language, experience a new culture. And uh, my decision was to leave Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, Bobby then came to me to say, listen, we want to extend you. Whatever you're going to get in Europe, we're going to pay you. Mm. I was like, why are you waiting so long? Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so he, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sign the end of August or the beginning of August, if I have not found a team in Europe, I'm automatically extending, extending my contract, contract with Kaiser Chiefs. But in the back of my mind, I knew I'm going. Mm. So now opportunities come and it's not your West Ham's yeah. and, your, and your Spurs. It's uh, your Nottingham Forest in the second of. It's your Gimarez in Portugal. It's your Bruges in Belgium and Russia. 26 years old, 25 going on 26, um, you're not getting any younger. Now you got to also understand that you need to make a better time. Yeah. Hence the decision. Knowing that Russia will be a bit not suited to my style of play, that Portugal and Belgium would be a better fit for me, um, I decided to go to Russia to make, to make a better ends, yeah. like you say. And then also to play at a, at a big team with some big players. And uh, I chose that opportunity and I have no regrets. Um, that's when I joined FC Moscow. Okay. And I mean, it's like you said, it's not a, a destination that's, I mean, you think of African players, you think of the cold weather, you think of yeah. all of those things. And you think it's not a it's not a destination that immediately springs to mind when, yeah. you, when you think of going to play in Europe. But talk me through the experience. I mean, I heard you speaking a bit of Russian upstairs. And yeah, I was like, yeah. and then this guy... Yeah, Gavari Chut Chut Blet. Yeah, you too, man. Yeah, Gavari. Ah, you too. <laughs> yeah, no, Russia, Russia for me, very difficult first six months. Very difficult. Because, you know, at the age of 25, you're stuck in your ways. Mm. As, as a human being, you're stuck in your ways. Um, it's very difficult to accept change. You, you've got your friends, you've got your routine, uh, you've got your independence. And here you are. Um, in the middle of, of eastern eastern block of Europe and uh, the weather is not forthcoming uh, the culture and what you've heard about Russian people is very cold so when you've made your mind up about something that's what you're going to experience yeah. you know if, so, so, so going in with that understanding and mentality it was an uphill first three months including getting injured in the first month mm. you know so that was very difficult, um, but then, um, so the Russian season starts in February and ends uh, beginning of November. Okay. And then um, I leave home early, come home October, uh, the team allows me to go home early, I do my rehabilitation and I go back. And now take into account that I signed in June. Mm -hmm. The weather is fine in June, it's yeah. summer, Yeah. 30, 35 plus. It gets a little bit chilly, but nothing that you can't handle. October, November, winter really comes in. So i never seen the cold yet. Yeah. So I come to sunny South Africa, 
full of US dollars. <laughs> That's good, eh? Chilling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then now, on the 2nd of Jan, I travel back to Russia. Joburg, Frankfurt, Frankfurt, Moscow. As I land in Moscow, I look out the window and all I see is white. <laughs> white, white, it's the snow, ice, baby. <laughs> snow, baby. I was like, ain't that a, anyway. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Why did I sign here? Yeah. Anyway, get to my apartment. So I land at uh, 1.32. So the team gives you a car, gives you a driver. Uh, so my driver's there to pick me up. Here we go. Boom, traffic. Sit in traffic for two hours. Get to my apartment. Half past three, it's pitch dark. Yeah. I'm like, where did the time go? I look at my watch, it's only three o'clock. Sun is set. Black, pitch black outside. My apartment, I got no electricity, there's no food, there's no nothing. I'm like, oh my goodness, what do I do here? <laughs> it is cold, the heat isn't paid. I was like, what What am I doing here? Yeah. And that's when I wanted to run away. <laughs> like Jabu. <laughs> I wanted to run away, I wanted to pull a shuffle. Yeah? <laughs> I'm like, no, take back your money, I don't want your money, I'm going to leave you. But then, slowly, slowly, I found my footing, I recovered from my injury. Um, we went away for, for pre-season, we... We, we train pre-season in, the, in warmer climates. So we go to Turkey, Dubai, yeah. Portugal, where it's better. Um, spending time around there, I started picking up the language and then started playing. And when I started playing, and then everything just fell into place. Ah, so you, you can speak, the, can you, how, how well can you speak Russian? Yeah, so hopefully my missus isn't, isn't uh, listening because then, you know, the more female friends you have, the quicker you pick it up. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> That was before I was married, so yeah. it's okay, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so my female friends assisted me in uh, picking up the language. So, я говорю, я по-русски, я понимаю чуть-чуть. Да, это, это очень медленно язык, very difficult language. Okay. Uh, no, that's French. <laughs> I, I can also, I don't know, man, maybe you're just coming here and you're mumbling stuff, eh? Oh, horrible. Come on, va? <laughs> okay, stop showing off, man. No, what's your name? Uh, my name is Fiso. Thank you. Oh, oh, <laughs> is that what you said? Ah, oh, no, I liked it. I liked it. Eh? Yeah. That's slick. That's slick. Right, right. Yeah, so obviously now, I mean, let's move on from Russia. Um, yeah. You come back home. Big decision. Big decision. Big decision. Join a big team. A <clears throat> massive team. The biggest team in the country. Say the name. So, <laughs> say the name, man. <laughs> come on now. Say the name, man. So my decision to join Orlando Pirates. Ah, uh, wait. Say the name, man. Bagania. Ah, oh, Ezim Yama. Ezim Yama. Listen, this guy is getting Nyama? excited here. Ezim Yama. I don't know. Ah, Ezim Yama again. God, I can't get this story. <laughs> yeah. So my decision to 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 come back to Orlando Pirates was um was a forced one because I had settled in Russia. Um, I had a good relationship with uh, the president of mm. the club. Um, they wanted to extend my, my, my stay in Russia. And um, like I said, I always, as a footballer, you always want to play at the highest level possible. So the funny thing for me was when I played locally, I was a regular in Bafana. Mm. The minute I went to Russia, I never got called up again. Yes, yes. So for me, that was, that was difficult to accept, you know. And um, 2006 World Cup is coming up in Germany. I played the first two qualifiers mm. against Ghana and I think it was Cape Verde. And I wasn't called up again. So we, the, the following year we were close to playing qualifiers and that year qualifiers for the World Cup. So I really wanted to be in that team. And then my manager says, you know what, if you come home, Play six months, you'll be back in the team. That was the decision, but it wasn't easy because I first needed to get out of my contract. Mm. Number one, number two, um, I was coming back and I needed to continue my earnings. So there was only one team that could afford me back then, and it was uh, Sundowns Patrice. That is a big one, yeah. So Patrice, you're earning big money. Don't 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 make my decision. It was all right, yeah. <laughs> so Pat- <laughs> what? What does soccer players like to me about the most they made? No man. So Patrice, because <laughs> it's not as much as you really. Think, yeah. So Patrice was like, okay, we'll sign him on 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 a three-year deal. 
two plus one and uh, come down and sign. So I'm like, okay. So I get here, Patrice is overseas. I'm only meant to meet with him the Monday. He agreed on the figures. My manager's all good. And uh, the Thursday, a good friend of mine, Tabo Khamaloy, calls me and says, eh, eh Bushi, eh, the chairman will you see? I'm like, ah, no, I can't see the chairman. <laughs> I'm already, he says, no. It's the Duke. Yeah, he's the Duke. You must go see him. I'm like, Ish, l- let me speak to my manager. Who's your manager? No, I didn't think. No, I'm yeah. saying, yeah, that's Muna. He's like, okay. So he tells. The Duke. The Duke. This is the manager. Yeah. Contact my man. Manager calls me. He says, Stiga, chairman wants to see us. <laughs> I say, I don't want to see the chairman. Man. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm fine. We, we're okay because... Yeah. I knew Neil Tovey was a coach. Yeah. I knew the players at Downs. I was yeah. more comfortable going to Downs. Yeah. And then the money was okay, you know? So everything fitted. Then my manager's like, no, don't worry. I know the money is that Pirates is paying. They're not going to pay you that. Yeah. Say, shut up. I hope uh, the chairman's not listening. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, okay. So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to ask for more. Yeah. He, won't, he, won't, he won't pay you. He'll tell me to, to, to bug off. Yeah. I'm mad. Go in there, we meet the chairman, top man. Whatever you expect when you're meeting the chairman, it's the opposite. Chilled, gentleman, calm, yeah. collected. Then we chat, chat, we chat life. No football, we chat life. He says, okay, no excuse us, let me and your manager continue this fight. I remove myself from the room, I'm happy, I'm going home, I'm like, okay, I'm waiting Monday, I want to sign that thing. Yeah. Calls me at five, he says, Stiga, guess what? I said, what? says, no, he's agreed to the terms. I say, eh? <laughs> and now, didn't you make promises elsewhere? Yeah. He's like, no, I'll handle that. Yeah. And all his managers. Now, he knows he'll make more money. There, so yeah. he's going to convince me. And that's how I ended up at the Land of Pirates. Okay. Yeah. The big team. The big team. Mm. Are, you, are, you, are you going on record? Uh, the big team. <laughs> There's a bigger team out there, but that's ah, the big team. Which one? <laughs> Sundance. Go see. Ish. Yeah, I know. Eh? Yeah. Uh, I think we must quote you for the round table with names. Eh? Yeah, yeah. You I guys can name. fight it out. Yeah, I can punch it yeah, up. You can you. fight it out. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean that was, um, I, know, I know you went to Greece after that. Um, yeah. Then you obviously came back and, and played uh, for, for Bid Vest Vitz, uh, Super Sport United on loan as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Let's speak about the back end of your career. I mean, do you look at that fondly? Yeah, so um, moving to Orlando Pirates never turned out to be what I thought it would be. Um, we never qualified for the World Cup. How do you like that? Mm. So I never got <laughs> back in the team. <laughs> and then... Um, I, I wasn't enjoying my football at Orlando Pirates and I decided to go on loan to Supersport under Pizzo. Pizzo called me up and says, I want to win the league and I need you. I'm like, coach, I want to play. Well, I'm happy, you know. And then went to Supersport, played three games, uh, contributed five assists because there was a quality team at mm. Supersport. Teko Modise, Dane Klet, Katlejo Mpela, um, yeah, the names were endless. Yeah, so some quality players there. We could have won the league, and then three games later, I got injured, out for the rest of the season. This happened, that happened. Myself and Orlando Pirates part ways. A little bit ugly, but anyway, we parted ways. And I, I then contacted my agent in in Europe. Said, look, I want to go back overseas, mm. and then got me into the team FC Pierikos in Greece. I went down there. I wasn't too happy because I had opportunities in South Africa. I said, you know what? Um, let me just ha- go down there, have a look. They, they invited me. You don't have to train. Come and have yeah. a look at our facilities and you decide. Yeah. So I go there. I'm like, no, I want to train. Put on my boots, play, and they make offer immediately. So that's when I went to Greece. The team was currently in the second division and uh, was looking to go to the first division. They needed quality players to take them up. So I go to Greece, uh, six months without my family, I'm alone. Um, Some of the best football I've ever played. I think my age contributed to that. You know, uh, as you mature as a player, you know when to pass, you know when to dribble, you know when to run. So um, I think I came of age, played some good football. Um, I was never a prolific scorer. I was always good, good with assists and crosses and whatever it may be. But scoring was never me. So in six months playing for Pierikos, 
I scored, I think it was 14 goals in 16 games. That was my highest tally yeah. ever. But I think that's a bit of maturity, a bit of hunger to get back at the top level. Mm. Uh, we went, we gained promotion to the first league and then I signed for two years uh, with the team and um, I eventually became captain. Um, I think this is when my life changed. Um, my wife and my son joined me. Greece is paradise, mm. you know. I uh, lived seven minutes from the beach, captain of the team, small village. You go out for dinner, nobody wants to take your money. Um, it's like uh, you're the captain, you know. Yeah. They call you a pectara in yeah. Greece. It's a pectara, so <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I, it, you know, there's very few people that have tasted or experienced being at peace, mm. and that's what my four years in Greece helped me experience. Was at peace. It's not. It was never where you ate, what you wore what you drive, um, who's your friends, that did not exist. I had a car, I had a Vespa, I would walk to the center, I would have eat where I want to, um, walk my kid to school, come back, go to gym, come back. Um, on a off holiday, you go to an island. I've never been at peace with my situation ever, and I think uh, that really contributed to maturity and going from the so-called footballer mm. To being a husband and a family man. Oh, that's, that's so cute. My nigga. That's huge, man. <laughs> My nigga. I love that. G- give me some love. Yeah. Give me some love. I like that. I like that. Because a lot of people don't find that. You no, know, you don't. Forget you don't. about sport, but yeah. in everyday life. Yeah, and I think that's... Look, football took me out of the, the dusty streets. Showed me the world. Um, more importantly, I think uh, I understood the value of being a father. Mm. With not having a father. And um, if I look back, out of all the teams I could have and should have played, the blessing for me today is that I have a family and I'm a parent. Out of all of that BS that happened, that ups and downs, lefts and rights, the glamour, the perception that goes with being a footballer, playing in Europe, the money, the woman, the what, what. I think the beauty is coming full circle and understanding the value of just being a parent. Yeah, that's a, that's a powerful message that's a bit rough. Yeah. And yeah, man. It's a powerful message that and uh, you know for 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 anyone listening, I'm sure they they take great inspiration from obviously your story. And uh, obviously now you've shifted on to to an analyst, you an entrepreneur. You know, we won't reveal your secrets on 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 the show, but <laughs> you know, you've moved on with your life. Um and no doubt casting a close eye on how things are going in the Absa Premiership. We've seen yeah. the start of the season now. Talk me through that and talk me through, I mean, it's only two games in for some, yeah. um, but what have you seen that you've liked? Yo, some exciting stuff, you know. Um, what I, you just, what got, I into, like, you you just know, got into analyst mode. Yeah? You, know what I like, <laughs> you know what I like is the, the six points for guys at Chiefs. Ah, okay, <laughs> carry on, carry on. <laughs> no, um, I done a game on Sunday, Bloemfontein Celtic against Golden Arrows. Wow, what a performance from them. Besides the scoreline, you know, what's happening at Bloemfontein Celtic, you know, when they say rise uh, in in the face of adversity, mm. Bloemfontein Celtic, in dismal yeah. administrative uh, situation last season, managed to end in the top eight. It's amazing. It's, I mean, it was a remarkable story what Little Hodola Sam as well as John Matuba were able to put together yes. in terms of keeping the team afloat. Pays weren't getting paid. Yes. I mean, I heard the ground staff, some of them got, re- got released because they just couldn't pay for anything, really. Exactly. And the team to still keep producing results. How do you even do that? And and now you've lost your 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 quality players. Mm. They sold Lamini. They sold a lot. I mean, Mugani Sam, yes, Pirates, Tehova, Zumawa. So they lost. I mean, a massive player for them was Alfred Ndenga in the last season. Big. We went to, to Pirates and we saw the quality at Pirates that he's been able to, to put on the park. So now... Yeah, they are licking their wounds in the top eight. People are expecting them um, to now, okay, this is this will possibly be the end of Bloom Celtic. Mm. That was a bit of a lucky stroke. Come up, first game against Orlando Pirates. The scoreline, not a reflection yeah. of the game. Losing 3-1, but boy, did they play. Mm. So, yeah, I am speaking to the coach before the game. 
because I played with him at Pirates. He was my captain. Siema, yeah. Siema, I'm like, uh, coach, your boys played well. I am expecting you to do well. He says, Stinga, these boys are fearless. You are going to see what's going to happen today. No respect. We know Lunga goes forward. We know Dube goes yeah. forward. We are going to exploit those spaces. Yeah. So I was like, okay. It's one thing saying it, but doing it is yeah. another. So I go up into the commentary box, and here we go. 30 seconds into the game. Bang. One. Up in. Later, two. Arrows find their feet. They put uh, Bloom Celtic under pressure. Boom. Three. Boom. Four. And five. Nail in the coffin. Sure. So, yeah, that's that's what we've been experiencing. 20 goals in the first week. So, um, who says PSL is boring? Yeah, 100%. I mean, we had a, in our last show, we, we, we picked our top fours. Um, he's smiling there because he thinks, <laughs> yeah, my top four's the one. Shut the hell up. I know you ain't saying anything, but I can hear your voice through that bloody grin of yours. Mm. Uh, I predicted. Very biased, I know. Yeah. I was just being very, I was being very biased, but mm. I've got a hope. Orlando Paris to win the title. I think it's a decent shout, but it's gonna take a special effort, you know, with with the, with the CAF Champions League mm. and Sundowns. Arguably, I mean, they've been phenomenal for for a number of years now, um, and they just seem to get even better. Um, can they be stopped? Mm. Can the likes of Cape Town City? I know you, 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 Brad, Benny McCarthy. Yeah. Lots of fire in the belly. We saw, <laughs> we saw him on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's not the only thing in his belly, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> but I mean, can Sundowns be stopped? Firstly, secondly, who are your dark horses to really cause some a bit of commotion? Yeah. So I agree with uh, Pirates, Sundowns, Cape Town City. I don't have a dark horse. If there's a dark horse, it'll be Cape Town City. But Cape Town City needs to get a striker. Mm. If Cape Town City gets a striker, that's going to give him. Kermit is is not a, a out and out striker. Okay. Kermit's like not more of a ten. Kermit's not going to give you fifteen goals. Mm, okay. Kermit will give you seven, eight goals, and he'll create a lot, mm. and he'll create a lot for the team. So he's a ten second striker, um, moving that defense because he's always moving, yes. and when he's when he's got fitness under his belt. He's is a is a thorn in any defense. They almost need a, a player in the mold of a Katla Kompela. Just a straight killer. Kill, you know, score straight goals. killer. You get a striker to score 10 goals um, and Cape Town City will be up there chasing for the title. I do think that Orlando Pirates um, uh, gaining momentum, some quality players, they beefed up nicely. Uh, but if I were to say who's going to win the league again, I don't see Mamelodi Sundowns being dethroned. Not just yet. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I got a thousand <laughs> rand on it. I got a thousand rand on nah, it. Okay, no, okay, no. No, no, I mean, I, I mean, I have to agree with you. I mean, mm-hmm. When I'm speaking, you know, and not as a Paris fan, as just yeah. someone, uh, put, if I'm putting my, my football head on, um, yeah. man, I look at that Sundowns team, I look at the strength in the goalkeeping department, and mm-hmm. the defence, that spine is really strong. Um, Gekana, unbelievable player. You know, you've got like Tide, players like Tide who are not getting a kick. Serena Jeremy never Brocky. played yet. Serena hasn't played yet. Yeah, I Charlie. Mean, it almost seems like they can just throw in anyone because there are times where there's not even a recognized center forward. You know, you have yeah. Villagazi, Morena, and and Mabuya, and it's like and it works. Yeah. It works, yeah. and it's again you probably put point that to the coach who's done a phenomenal job. There. And if Sundowns gets Billiard, mm. then it's going to be difficult to stop you. No, I think it'll be impossible to stop because Billiard's going to give you another ten points. Mm. He'll score. He'll create. That's the easy 10 points that you're going to get. They ended off with, uh, I think, 40-something 40, 40 points. So that will give him close to 60 points. And then, yeah, then it's difficult to... It's heavy Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be inter- interesting to see how things do pan out in the Absa Premiership. Uh, so obviously, the MTN8 is also starting. That's always a special tournament. But just to quickly sign off, um, obviously, there's a lot of South African players that are doing well overseas as well. Um one in particular, you know, I'd just like to to to, to, to sign off with Percy Dow, signed for Club wow. Rouge, a team that you know. Um, two goals in the first two games in the in, wow. the, in the Belgian top league, yeah. and we're really seeing the impact and you know that lion effect that he, he's he's I mean he's always played yeah. like with eyes like eyes like fire. No, I'm just so happy for Percy Tau because you can see a boy, and uh, you know in the football circles, well, word gets around very quickly. To say that he's he's a 24 hour professional mm. there's no distractions woman parties cars you know the norm because you're a human being and if you come from very little and suddenly you've got a lot 
uh, you, you want to pay yourself back and then yeah. you get distracted so word is 24 professional loves being on the field loves his football um, I was very disappointed last season when they put him to a second division team because we seen his quality yeah. there's always a question of can you adapt to European football now when you say adapt people it's easy for people to judge fans and say yeah you don't make it in Europe yeah, they don't yeah. understand the amount of of things you need to overcome number one Percy's game is running with the ball mm. in Europe in winter my friend you cannot run with the ball <laughs> the fields after 15 minutes are so soggy you need to learn how to play with six studs so you need to switch up your game but Percy Tower has speed you know so so I knew his quality and I knew he needed to play in the Belgium first division yeah. and he'd do well yeah so last season didn't make sense to me but this proves that you don't know everything because that has proven to settle him nicely mm. um, he's done well he's now able to adapt to this level and I'm just so happy to see you see the boy plays with a smile on his face you know and a brilliant start to his career Bruges playing in the qualifications of a Champions League it's by no means a small team for those that don't know it's a it's a team with rich history in Belgium it's a top team uh, with a top stadium with top fans so we're just uh, happy that he's doing well and he must bring that um, back to the national team but what this does is when you come back to the national team players around you want to find out hey Percy how's it, how's it going and they there? start wanting to go overseas because that's what happened with me I'm in the national team, Benny, Quentin Fortune, Man United, uh, Zuma, uh, Copenhagen, uh, Steven Pinar, um, Ajax Amsterdam, you know, and you're surrounded with this quality, there's three or four of you that's a local place, and what happens, you want to go overseas, yeah. and this, the Percy effect, I'm hoping that it rubs off on the other boys. Yeah, 100%. So, uh, yeah, I guess that brings an end to our show, we thank you for your contribution, we thank you for the stories, yeah. uh, I hope the Iron Duke wasn't listening. <laughs> I hope your wife wasn't listening. Uh, but yeah, great to have you. And I uh, really appreciate your time. Um, one of those two true gentlemen of the game. Um, he's also a model in his, in his, in his, uh, in his, uh, in his spare time. I've seen it firsthand. And our commercial shoot. But that's a story for another day. I might just post that Stanton walk down the ramp. Down the ramp. <laughs> Thanks to Fredericks. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us on the first minute show. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, bud. Right, so, yeah, that's a wrap for episode six of the first minute show. It's been a special one. I know that all of you would uh, really enjoy it. Um, and we look forward to interacting with you guys again. Don't forget, keep subscribing, keep liking, keep joining the family. We love you guys. From me, it's a wrap. <laughs>